Did everybody survive Christmas? Good morning, it's Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right, it's me, Uncle Lou, live on YouTube for you. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Subscribe to this channel. College football videos almost every single day, year-round. Some of them are watchable. I don't know about this one. Eh, this, this one might be watchable. Uh, anyway, I uh, hope everybody enjoyed their Christmas. Hey, did you know that Florida State is literally a circus school? <sighs> Man. You know, sometimes you don't even have to make shit up. Uh, just the facts uh, are are enough. Um, anyway, the most disappointing teams of the 2023 college football season. Um, I know we still have bowl games and playoffs and all that to go, but, uh, I, you know, it, it's, it's pretty easy to look right now and tell, like, who overachieved, underachieved, uh, yeah, exceeded expectations, or, or didn't, things like that. I've got a list here of... Uh, a handful of teams that, um, to me, had uh, disappointing seasons in 2023. Now, this is not a comprehensive list. Uh, there's, uh, I, I mean, technically, I guess you could go back and look at, like, the preseason expected win totals for every single team. In any team that won less games than that, you could call them disappointing. That, that's not really the approach I took. This is more along the lines of, like, what my expectations were for a team based on what they actually did in the regular season. And I've got some obvious ones that would probably be on everybody's list, copious notes. Uh, and then I've got a few that maybe are just disappointing to me based on my own personal expectations. Uh, maybe other people didn't have as high of expectations as me for some of these teams, but... Um, well, let's just start... Well, let's do this first. All right, so this is one easy way to do it here. So you look at the top 15 and, you know, a handful of teams just immediately stand out uh, because they were very highly ranked here in the preseason. Uh, again, this is the preseason top 15. And you look at them now and they're either unranked or ranked drastically lower than, well, you know, what, what we had them ranked in the preseason. Now, I'm using the AP uh, because the AP puts out both a preseason poll and a poll now. So it's easy to compare apples to apples here with this one particular uh, poll. But you go down the list of the teams in the top 10 in particular, and you say, okay, who was in the top 10 in the preseason that's not there now? Uh, well, LSU. Uh, LSU was five uh, in the AP poll in the preseason. Um, they ended up uh, 13th. Not terrible. Not a terrible season. I mean, they were nine and three. And honestly, not a lot of people even picked LSU to win the West. Now, I did, so maybe they're a little bit more disappointing to me than they are to some of you. Uh, but to me, what makes LSU particularly disappointing this season uh, is not only did they take a step back from last year where, you know, in Brian Kelly's first year, they won the SEC West, they beat Bama, uh, all that. Um, they failed to do any of those things this year, losing to Bama, not winning the West, went 9-3. and three. But th to me, the thing is, their offense ended up being better even than most people thought it would be. Jaden Daniels obviously won the Heisman. Had the, And look, there should be no debate. He had, in my opinion, clearly the best season of any college football player in the country. I mean, the numbers he put up both with his arm and his legs, the touchdown totals, uh, the lack of interceptions. I mean, he had an amazing season. To me, that almost makes it even worse that somehow LSU finished 9-3. Now, of course, their problems were all on the defensive side of the ball, but... When you rank this high in a preseason five and you finish outside the top ten, you know, a little disappointing. Now, right below that, you've got an even worse offender in Southern Cal. Southern Cal was ranked sixth in the preseason in the AP poll, as you can see there. Um, and not only did they not finish within the top ten, they finished unranked. Uh, they went seven and five, a returning Heisman Trophy winner in Caleb Williams, a head coach in Lincoln Riley that has multiple playoff appearances. Now, all of them came at Oklahoma. And none of them resulted in any playoff wins. But you go back again to last year, Southern Cal is a worse example uh, even than LSU, right? First-year coaches Brian Kelly and Lincoln Riley at LSU and Southern Cal, respectively. In the first uh, year, each team makes their conference championship game. Each team loses their conference championship game. But each, each team makes their conference championship game. And then in year two, both teams have a little bit of a, a backwards slide. Southern Cal's <clears throat> way more drastic and worse than LSU's. LSU is clearly a much better team 
uh, than Southern Cal. I don't think anybody would argue that point. But they finished seven and five. Caleb Williams had a disappointing season. The defense just fell apart, as expected by a lot of people, I guess. But look, a, a lot of people had questions about uh, Southern Cal heading into this season concerning their defense, and all of those concerns. Uh, came to light, but I don't think anybody was predicting Southern Cal to go 7-5, and five, but that's what they did, a very disappointing season. Penn State started the season ranked 7th. Now, they finished the season ranked 10th, so they remained within the top 10, but I've got Penn State as a disappointing team still, even though they had a pretty good year. Look, in, in a bubble, in a vacuum, in a one-off situation, Going through the 2023 season and your only two losses coming to Ohio State and Michigan, two really good teams, is nothing to be ashamed or embarrassed about and would rarely ever be considered to be underachieving. The issue with Penn State is that this just keeps happening year after year after year. I mean, this was a carbon copy of last year for Penn State. And they lose Sean Clifford, the quarterback last year, who a lot of people blamed for their shortcomings. And they uh, bring in Dew Aller. And, you know, expectations were high and he didn't live up to it. And I fell for it. I, I was, hoping's not the right word. I don't really care whether Penn State goes winless or wins all their games, but I got tricked. I, I felt like Penn State was going to take that step forward this year. I felt like losing Sean Clifford was addition by subtraction. And I had faith and trust that, that Dew Aller was going to do what people said he was going to do, and he didn't. He didn't have a good year. They fell short again, losing to Michigan and Ohio State again, and it just feels like a disappointment again because they keep bumping their head against the same ceiling year after year after year after year. So again, Penn State didn't have nearly as bad of a year as some of the other teams on this list in terms of disappointment, but it still has to be disappointing even for Penn State fans. I bet you, I, I, I'm, I'm willing to bet, Penn State fans would have been perfectly happy going 10-2 and two if the losses would have been against at least one other team. In other words, if they could have beat at least one of Michigan or Ohio State, and then maybe stumbled against some lesser opponent. Record the same, 10-2. and two. It's just that they beat one of the big boys. Like, the, the mood around the, the fans, the fan base of Penn State would be a lot better, wouldn't it? But yeah, I, I, I still think it's a little bit, uh, I still think it's a little bit disappointing. And then at number nine, you had Clemson ranked ninth in the preseason uh, by the AP, and of course, they had a very disappointing year, finished sixth in the ACC, which is just a horrendous group of five league, and Clemson finished sixth there, uh, ranked uh, ranked ninth in the preseason, finished the season unranked with four losses. Now, the Florida State loss, not that Clemson fans want to lose to Florida State, and not that Clemson fans find any loss to be acceptable, but looking back on the season, that's an understandable loss. Florida State was a really good team. That was a great game. It went to overtime, and it just went Florida State's way. It's the other three losses that are the problem, starting opening weekend with Duke, where they basically get blown out 28-7. to Now, Duke ended up being a decent team, but not a good enough team to have uh, th that they should have beaten Clemson in week one. And then they have unexplainable losses to Miami and NC State. So just a bad year, disappointing year for sure uh, for our buddies, uh, the Clemson you had Washington at 10. They had a good year. Texas at 11, good year. Tennessee at 12. I think Tennessee had a disappointing season. Now, Tennessee finished or started the regular season ranked 12th, and they finished the regular season, at least in the AP poll, ranked 25th. So they didn't fall out of the rankings, but still, after the season they had last year, which was considered by many to be sort of a breakout season, Josh Heupel, year two, they go 10-2 and two in the regular season, 11-2 and two after a New Year's six. Bowl win, a lot of hype coming into this season. Six-year senior Joe Milton taking over for Hendon Hooker at quarterback, and it never quite worked offensively, at least not like it did last year under Hendon Hooker. Um, the loss to Alabama, again, on the road, Bryant-Denny Stadium. Do you want to lose to Alabama? No, uh, and I'm not suggesting it's it's acceptable for Tennessee fans to, to lose or whatever, but again, you lost to a really, really good team on the road there. Now, the Georgia game at home, again, Georgia was a really good team. Georgia was favored. Georgia won the game. But because that was a home game for Tennessee, I think it was a disappointing loss. They had a lot of eggs in that basket. Um, all see, all offseason, all season long. And then even by the time that game was played towards the end of the season, when Tennessee's season at that point had pretty much completely fallen apart, 
they still had a lot of hope that they could pull that off at home and get sort of their big win this year, like they had last year at home against Alabama. It didn't happen. Uh, Georgia basically blew them out uh, up there in Neyland Stadium. Uh, and Tennessee finishes the season, what, 8-4? and four? And it's the loss to Missouri, really. Um, the, the loss to Missouri and the loss to Florida. Those are two games Tennessee should not have lost. Now, yes, Missouri ended up being a good team. No doubt, no question about it. Not to take anything away from Missouri. But Tennessee was a good team last year. Had some pieces coming back. We were told by the Tennessee fans they weren't going to miss a beat and they were going to be great again this year. Not only did you lose to Missouri, you got blown out. And then the Florida game... I get it. Well, Florida just gives us trouble. Well, we had to play them there. Florida was a horrendous fucking team. I mean, they were just absolutely abysmal. Their third straight losing season, they're five and seven. They didn't even make a bowl game. And that was by far the worst game of the year um, that, ten that Tennessee played, in my opinion. Maybe the Missouri game uh, you put up there, too. But that that's just an unacceptable loss early in the year to lose that thing to Florida. I, I think it was a disappointing season for Tennessee, even though they did finish... Uh, ranked inside the top 25. And let's be real, 8-4, and four, if you look at it over a 15-year period, 8-4 and four is pretty good for Tennessee. They've had a lot of five, six, seven win seasons over the last 15 years. 8-4 and four really is only disappointing based on the fact that they had the breakout last year with the 11 wins, New Year's 6 game, uh, all that kind of thing. And then failing to get sort of um, a big win over one of the big boys this year like they did last year. A little bit disappointing for Tennessee, but not the end of the world. Uh, what else do we have within the top 15 before we move on to some other stuff here? Uh, Utah, you know, it, it's hard. I, I, I guess Utah did have a disappointing season. I guess there's no other way to describe it. Whether you want to look at their preseason win total expectation, uh, where they were picked to finish in the Pac-12, the fact that they've won the Pac-12 two years in a row, then you fast forward to this year and they didn't accomplish any of that. Uh, they started the season ranked 14th, finished the season unranked at 8-4, and four, but they just had so many in injuries, particularly at the quarterback position, and it was an all-year thing. Uh, Cam Rising ended up never playing a down this year, and they let a couple of games get away from them. Their defense played well and kept them in a lot of games, but offensively they just struggled this year. I think you kind of have to consider it a disappointment for Utah this year, even though I guess there are plenty of valid reasons, another word for reasons would be excuses, that you could point to to say why they had a disappointing season. But to me, anyway, disappointing uh, nonetheless. Uh, and I guess that's pretty much it within the top 15. I mean, Notre Dame started the season ranked uh, uh, 13th, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, to me, that wasn't all that disappointing. Their season wasn't all that disappointing. I wasn't expecting a whole lot from Notre Dame. But I've got some more teams on this list here. Uh, not necessarily just the top 15. Again, that's kind of the easier way to do it. But what about Ohio State? Was Ohio State season disappointing? Now, look, you're getting into some difficult and some gray territory here when you start talking about teams that go 11-1, and one, finish a season inside the top five, yet somehow it's disappointing. There's only a handful of teams that would ever that you would ever even think about that being a disappointing season. Ohio State is one of them. Um, they made the playoffs last year. They did not make it this year. But an even bigger issue, I think, for Ohio State is the third straight loss to Michigan. Third year in a row they failed to even make the Big Ten title game. Um, I don't think that, look, it's, again, disappointment is sort of a result of expectations, okay? And when you're Ohio State, Bama, Michigan, Georgia, maybe one or two other teams, it's pretty much playoffs or bust, okay? I, I get that. We're going to talk about Georgia in a second, too. So it's not just a bash Ohio State thing. Again, I'm not bashing Ohio State. They're a really good team. And, when, you know, they're one of those teams this year. Um, you know, there's three of them. There's the, the, uh, Georgia, Florida State, Ohio State. Um, now, Florida State's got some injury situations, so they're sort of a little different. But you take Georgia and Ohio State, for example. Georgia and Ohio State, on a neutral field, could give any playoff team a decent game. Now, I'm not saying that to say they should be in the playoffs. They shouldn't. Georgia and Ohio State both had chances to get in, and they didn't win the game they needed to win. What I mean is, when you look forward to next year, when we go to this 12-team playoff, I guess what I'm asking is, Ohio State goes 11-1 this year. They lose to Michigan. They don't win their division. They don't win the Big Ten. They don't make the playoffs. I get it that all of those things are disappointing. If we fast forward to next year and Ohio State does the exact same thing, 
They go 11-1 and one with a loss to Michigan at the end of the year, and they don't make the Big Ten title game for whatever reason. Would that be disappointing? I guess. But they'd be playing in a playoff game right now if this was next year. I, I, I guess we're going to... We're going to have to, I think, wait and kind of see how fan bases react to things. I, I, I think moods and feelings are going to change uh, when the playoffs expand. In other words, it's very easy for me as a Georgia fan or an Ohio State fan who might be watching to be extremely disappointed right now. Both Georgia and Ohio State only have one loss. In Georgia's case, they were 12-0 in the regular season. Only loss came in a conference title game. So between you know Georgia and Ohio State combined are twenty three and two, twenty three and two. Neither is in the playoffs. That's disappointing. Um, it's extremely disappointing for both teams. Next year though, both those teams will be in the playoffs. Exact same scenario as this year. One you know Ohio State is uh, uh, sixth or seventh in in most final rankings. Georgia is sixth or so in most final rankings. Florida State fifth. All three of those teams extremely disappointed right now. All three of those teams are going to be in the playoffs next year if that scenario were to play out like it did this year. So I'm curious to see how kind of, uh, in a, look, for Ohio State in particular, it's always going to be disappointing losing that, that game at the end of Michigan if you lose it. But like last year when y'all lost to Michigan, but you still got into the playoffs, it kind of, it, it, it sort of rejuvenates you, right? It, yes, it sucks we lost to Michigan, but we got our chance. We're in the playoffs. There's going to be a lot of that going forward uh, when we go to the 12 team playoff. But I do think it's still, I, you know, I, I can understand Ohio State fans being disappointed in this season. And I can even understand other fans looking at Ohio State as having a disappointing season. 11 and 1, third straight loss to Michigan, didn't make the playoffs. And you can pretty much say those exact same things about Georgia. So Ohio State started the preseason ranked, uh, what, third, finished ranked seventh. It's not a huge drop off. Georgia finished or started the season ranked number one in the preseason in the AP poll. Last uh, the the current AP poll that after the conference championship games, Georgia is sixth uh, behind the playoff teams and Florida State. So both teams had disappointing seasons based on where they wanted to be. It, right, it, right. You, you ask Georgia or Ohio State fans or whatever in the beginning of the season, what you know, where do you want to be playing in January playoffs? It was playoffs for both teams. So in that respect, it's disappointing, uh, but not disappointing like, you know, Southern Cal going 7-5 and five or even LSU going 9-3 and three or something like that. But disappointing nonetheless uh, for both those teams, Georgia and uh, Georgia and Ohio State. What else do we have on here? Southern Cal and LSU, we talked about Penn State, Georgia. How about Texas Tech? Now, I, I know Texas Tech is a team that not a lot of people pay attention to, and they weren't even ranked in the preseason. Um, so I get it, but I had high expectations for Texas Tech. In fact, I picked Texas Tech to make the Big 12 title game. So maybe this is less of Texas Tech having a disappointing season and more of Uncle Lou just being a fucking moron when it comes to, um, uh, picking these, these, uh, college football games. I don't know. Uh, as a lot of you are aware, I've never even seen a game. I've never played football. I've never set foot inside a football stadium. I wouldn't know the difference between a football um, and a wiffle ball bat, um, you know, you know how that goes. Uh, yep, type about it. But they ended up going six and six, a disappointing season. Now, I still like their coaching staff, and they're putting together a pretty good recruiting class. Again, you got to remember this is Texas Tech. Are they in the top five? No. Uh, but Texas Tech, especially with uh, Oklahoma and Texas leaving the Big 12, there's no real big boy in the Big 12 anymore. You got a lot of good programs, right? Who's going to rise to the top? Texas Tech, I think, has to be on a short list of teams that. You know, maybe going forward in the Big 12, you would expect to contend for some conference championships. But this year, at 6-6, six and six, a disappointing season. We talked about Utah. What about South Carolina? Now, again, they started the season unranked. Not a ton of expectations. But in Beamer's first two years in Columbia, South Carolina exceeded whatever expectations anybody had uh, of them. This year, not the case. Not a good year. I think we're 5-7. and seven. Didn't make a bowl game. Had some bad losses and didn't really get the big win that they sort of got last year, two of them, um, at the end of last year against Tennessee and Clemson. Didn't really have any of that for them this year. They've also been devastated in the portal. Um, uh, I don't make a lot of portal videos or talk a lot about the portal because, in general, the portal taketh. 
uh, and the portal giveth. Uh, but there are a handful of teams that have just been absolutely wrecked by the portal. And you wonder if they're going to have the clout, the pull, and honestly the money to, to, to get what they need out of the portal to replace that. South Carolina has not had a good portal season so far, in my opinion. But anyway, disappointing. Five and seven for South Carolina after two overachieving seasons for Shane Beamer. Uh, they hit the wall this year. Five and seven for the Gamecocks. Texas A&M, seven and five. Not disappointing to me. Here's a list of teams that were not disappointing to me. Texas A&M at seven and five. That wasn't disappointing. Not to me. I didn't expect much from Texas A&M. I thought they would improve over last year, which is what, the five-win season? But I said, if they hell, if they get back to 8-4, to four, that'd be a miracle. And we used to laugh at Texas A&M for going 8-4. and four. If they go 8-4 and four this year, they'll be bragging. Well, they didn't go 8-4. and four. They went 7-5, and five and Jimbo got fired. So it's, is it a disappointing season for Texas A&M? Yes. But I think the Texas A&M fans know or should hope or think that they're going to be better off two years from now having rid themselves of Jimbo Fisher than if they would have kept him. The Bobby Petrino experiment kind of worked. I thought Texas A&M offensively was better this year than what I've seen them play over the last couple of years, but it just wasn't enough. Again, they had some injuries, but so does everybody else, and it just hasn't been good enough at Texas A&M. And, and, and look, any year at Texas A&M at 7-5 and five is a disappointment, period. Any year at Texas A&M, 7-5 and five is a disappointment. But I wasn't personally disappointed um, in Texas A&M, because that's about what I expected them to do. Florida at five and seven, not disappointing to me. That's pretty much where I had them pegged. In fact, I had that's exactly where I had them pegged. I had Florida going five and seven. Now I got a couple of the games wrong. Um, uh, I think I, I had them beating Tennessee. Uh, uh, no, no, no. I had them losing to Tennessee, and I think beating Kentucky. And instead, it went the other way around, or whatever. <laughs> But five and seven, not good. Third straight losing season for Florida. Didn't make a bowl game. So I, it is a disappointing season overall, but not disappointing to me in that in, in that that's about what I expected. And Colorado at four and eight. Uh, disappointing to all the uh, prime stands who don't know a fucking thing about college football and thought for some reason Colorado was winning nine and ten games and winning the Pac-12 and all that. Uh, and look, shout out to Colorado for starting 3-0. and That's amazing. Um, an absolute shame, though, that you lost eight of your last nine games and finished at 4-8, and eight, um, which is about where everybody thought you would be. Your preseason win total was 3.5. Now, I had you at three wins and you won four, so you exceeded my expectations, uh, which is why to me, Colorado going 4-8 and eight is not disappointing. But it must be hella disappointing to the prime stands, the Dion Dingleberries, who spent all offseason and the first month of the season telling Uncle Lou and anybody that would listen uh, that unless you worship at the altar of Dion, you're A, a racist, and number two, an idiot. Uh, but it turns out uh, that those two things apply only to you. Uh, there you go. Some disappointing teams for 2023. Again, not a comprehensive list. And I'm curious. Let me know down below which... Uh, uh, well, two things. Your team. Were you disappointed in your team? Who is your team and were you disappointed in them? And feel free to list off uh, a team or two or five that to you had a disappointing 2023. Again, hope everybody enjoyed their Christmas yesterday. We got New Year's coming up. We got great bowl games coming up this week. Uh, I'll be live streaming a lot of games this week. None today. Uh, today's Tuesday. We're going to do the call-in show tonight at 9, so well, I won't be live-streaming any games today, but today is the last day this week that I won't be live-streaming. I'll be live-streaming games Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so we're going to have a great week of football. Appreciate you watching. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not. Have a good morning. Oh, one, oh how, could, how could I forget? Uh, to all the typey types, uh, trolly trolls down there, no, th th this, is not a, this is not an Atlanta Braves hat. Uh, don't worry. I don't care about baseball and I don't watch baseball. This is just an Atlanta hat.